Hey there, Cassie from Elementor here. Did you watch our Rad Skater video? Now you can learn how we did it. We'll take you behind the scenes of our skater campaign and share the design secrets on how to build a cool landing page for your business. In this video, you'll learn how to use custom positioning, motion and scrolling effects, the flip box, and forms to add a sense of live motion to your pages. First off, create a new page. Give it a name and click Edit with Elementor. Now in the page settings, let's change the layout to canvas. Great, click the plus to add a new section and we'll go with one column. Let's set up our work layout. Set the content width to full width, columns gap to no gap, height to minimum height, and set it to 140 VH. Now in style, let's add our background image. Click on classic and choose your image. You can upload an image or use one from the media library. Let's go with this one. Now let's tweak it a little. In position, set it to center center, attachment fixed, repeat, no repeat, and set the size to cover. Next, drag in a heading widget and type in your text. Align it to the center, and in style, change the color to white. In typography, change the font to Anton, size to 180 pixel, weight to normal, transform to uppercase, style to italic, line height to 1.2, and letter spacing to 80. Awesome. Let's add the skater image. So drag in an image widget and choose our skater from the media library. Next, in advanced, set the top margin to negative 400 pixel and bottom to minus 100 pixels. Oh, and open the navigator. It helps you keep track of all your elements. So right click the background here and choose navigator. There it is. Change the image name to skater for easy reference. Moving on, drag in an image widget and choose the ramp image. In the navigator, drag it under the skater image and change its name to ramp. And change the image size to full. In the navigator, click the section to enter its settings. In layout, column position, change it to bottom. Now click the column and in layout, widget space, type in zero. That stretches the ramp image to the whole width of the page. Now let's add motion effects. Click on the skater image, open motion effects, and flip on the scrolling effects. Click on vertical scroll and set the direction to down and speed to 4.5. Leave the viewport settings on default. Next, click on the heading widget to enter its settings. In advanced, motion effects, flip the switch on mouse effects. Next, click on 3D tilt. Leave the direction as direct and set the speed to two. Amazing, our first section is done. Great job. Moving on to the next section. So add a section with one column. In layout, change the content width to full width, height to minimum height, and set it to 150 VH. For the column position, set it to stretch and the overflow to hidden. In style, add a background color. I'll add a grayish color. Drag in a heading widget. In content, change the text and align it to the middle. In style, change the text color. And in typography, change the font to Anton and the text size to 80 pixels. Excellent. Now drag in a text editor widget just under the title. Paste your text here. Cool. In style, align it to the center, change the text color, and in typography, set the font size to 18 pixels. Set the line height to 1.8 and the letter spacing to negative 0.2. Now in advanced, add a 300 pixel margin from the left and right. Brilliant. Drag in a button widget Change the text, align it to the middle, and change its size to large. In style, typography, change the font to Lato, weight to bold, and letter spacing to 1.5. In normal, change the text and button color. In hover, flip the text and button colors, so the text to yellow and the button to dark blue. Now, let's spice it up with some hover animations. Why don't we go for float? Round the button's corners by adding 40 pixels in the border radius. And to make some more space, add 20 pixels padding to the top and bottom, and 50 pixels to the left and right. Cool. 
Looks good. Click the section's handle to enter its settings and add some space here. Go to Advanced and add 100 pixels to the top padding. Drag in an image widget and choose your image. I'll use this skateboard image. In the navigator, change its name to Front Skate Layer and add two more images here, front, middle, and back. Choose this one here and name it Middle Skate Layer. And for the last one, drag in an image widget and rename the item in the navigator to Back Skate Layer. Still on the Back Skate Layer in Advanced, go to Custom Positioning and change the position to Absolute and set the vertical orientation to the bottom. Now click the Middle Skate Layer. Go to Advanced, Custom Positioning, set it to Absolute, and again, set the vertical orientation to the bottom. Now for the Front Skate Layer, Advanced, Custom Positioning, set it to Absolute, and Vertical Orientation to the bottom as well. Swell! Now let's add some motion animation to your scene. First, add all the images. So drag in an image widget, and choose this wheel. In Advanced, Custom Positioning, set the width to Custom and use the slider to set it to 180 pixels. In position, set it to absolute. Now change the offset to percent and drag it here. Now add a second image. So drag in a second image widget. Pick this image here. Advanced, custom positioning, custom width. Set the offset to percent and move it here. So now you just repeat this process a few times. So fast forwarding here. Great, you did it. So now let's add some motion effects. Click the first image we inserted. In advanced, motion effects, flip on scrolling effects. Click the pencil next to vertical scroll and leave the default settings. Next, click the pencil next to the horizontal scroll and set the speed to two. In Style, click the pencil next to the CSS filters and add some blur. Five is good. Yep. So again, go over all the images you've added and follow the same routine, just with some minor changes to the speed and direction. So speeding up here. Cool. Let's see here. Alrighty. Click the section's handle to enter its settings, and in Layout, set the column gap to No Gap. OK, great. Now we're done with this section. Let's take a look. Awesome. Moving on, add a section with one column. This is going to be our Products section. Set the content width to 1600, the height to min height with 100VH. Over in Style, add a background image to your section. Nice. Set the position to top center, repeat to no repeat, and size to cover. Drag in a heading widget, paste your text here, and align it to the center. In style, go ahead and change the text color. In typography, change the font, its size, spacing. What time is it? Time to drag in a text editor widget, paste in the text, align it to the center, change the font to Lato, and font size to 18 pixels. And drag in an intersection widget. Set its width to 1600, just like we did for the section. Let's add a call to action widget to the left column. So search for call, here it is. Tweak the settings a little, change the skin to cover, and choose an image. In content, change the title, remove the description text, and change the buttons text. Great! In style, set the minimum height to 500 pixels and the vertical position to bottom. Back in content, in normal, change the title and button color to black. In Typography, change the font to our friend Anton, set the size to 40 pixels, weight to normal, and letter spacing to 1.4. For the button, 
Change the font properties as well. And in Hover, change the text color to yellow. I don't want the border around the button, so I'll set the border width to zero. Let's check it out. Cool. In Hover Effects, Content, disable the animation by setting it to None. Still in Hover Effects, Background, remove the overlay color on Hover by sliding the Opacity slider down. And change the Zoom In animation on Hover and set it to 1000 milliseconds. Have a look. We need to space it out a little, so in Advanced, play with the margin. Add 40 pixels to the right and 40 pixels to the left. Great! Now duplicate your column and duplicate again, and delete the empty column on the right. Click the middle call to action widget and replace the image. Let's choose this hoodie. Change the text to hoodie, all right, and the one on the right, change the image to this hat. And type in accessories. Click the section handle to enter its settings and space it out a bit. So add 100 pixels to the top. Awesome. Now for the intersection. In Advanced, Motion Effects, set an entrance animation. We'll go with Fade In Up. Cool. So we're done with this section. Next, we'll add a section with one column. This will be our Meet Our Team section. Change it to Full Width, Height to 100 VH, and in Style, give it a background color. Drag in a heading widget and type in your text. Align it to the center and in style, change the color and font properties. Next, drag in an intersection and change its content width to full width. Duplicate the column twice so you'll end up with four columns. Search for the flip box widget and drag it into the left column. Remove the graphic element, change the title and description, and paste in your text. Then click background and add the first team member image. In position, change it to center center and set the size to cover. In the back card, remove the title in the text and change the buttons text to read more. In the background, Add an image of our team members in action. Position it to center center, size to cover, and in the settings, change the height to 70 VH and the flip direction to the right. Cool. Okay, check this out. Let's also add the 3D depth effect. Great. Now in style, set the front's vertical position to the bottom, change the text color so you can see it, and do the same for the description text. Let's change the font to our Anton font and tweak a few settings. Add some padding, 50 for the left and right, 80 for the bottom, and zero for the top. Now for the back, vertical position to the bottom, change the button size to medium, and let's tweak the typography settings. Change the button's text color to our dark blue and the background to yellow. Again, remove the button's border by setting the width to zero and make it round by setting the border radius to 50. Let's space it out a bit. Set 80 pixels padding to the bottom. Right-click your column and right-click paste onto the next one. Cool, isn't it? Now paste again, and again. It's a real time saver. All that's left to do now is change the names and images. So let me fast forward here a bit. All right, let's add some margin to the heading widget. 30 pixels should do the trick. Okay, almost done. On to our final section. Choose one column, set the width to 500, column gap to no gap, height to minimum height, and set it to 60 VH, and set the column position to top. In style, set the background color and choose an image. 
I'll use this ramp. Change the position to bottom center and the size to cover. Now drag in a text editor widget and paste in your text. In style, set the alignment to the middle, change the text color, and typography settings as well. Search for the form widget and drag it in just under the text. We're creating a subscribe form, so we don't need the name and message fields here. Let's just delete them. Click on the email and change the column width to 60%. Next, change the input size to medium and remove the label. Open the Submit button settings and change the text to Subscribe. We'll also change the size to medium and the column width to 40%. In Style, change the column gap and row gap to zero. In the Field settings, change the text color and the typography settings to your liking. Remove the field's background color, but add a border. So let's choose our dark blue and set the border width to 2. Now let's make our field round by adding 50 pixels to the top and left border radius settings. In the button, change the background color to our dark blue and the text color to the background's color. Let's tweak the button typography settings a bit. And again, round the corners by adding 50 pixels to the right and bottom this time. Awesome. And of course, add the social icons widget to seal the deal. Search for it and drag it right under your subscribe form. Tweak the default settings a bit. Let's change the Twitter icon. Click to open the settings and click on the image. This will open Elementor's icon library. Search for Instagram and there it is. Let's also change the Google Plus. So just do it again. Click, open the icon library and type U. All right, there it is, YouTube's icon. Super duper. On to changing the shape to a circle. And in style, color, change it to custom. In primary color, choose our dark blue. And in the secondary color, choose your background's color. Space them out a bit. In spacing, type in 12. In advanced, add some margin from the top. 20 pixels should do it. And perfecto, we're done. Scroll up the page to see all our work. Looks rad. Woohoo! Feels like we're skating down the page. Try building your own landing page similar to the skater page. And don't forget, for more videos and rad tutorials, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Later, skater!